Fantastic. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Natalie. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, you know what they say is if you if you love what you do, it doesn't feel like you're working. Um, and um, so between this and running, I love what I do, but running pays very poorly. Um, in fact, it costs. So um, yeah, so I tend to do a little bit more of this. Although when this session is finished, I'll be going for a run. So yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about YouTube today, and I'm going to try and do my normal fit a one day session into 45 minutes. Um, but like I said previously, uh, for those of you who attended, um, I will always answer any question you send me via email. And um, yeah, I don't know if Natalie is going to distribute the presentations, but especially if, um, okay, uh, sometimes it goes a bit fast and there's something you don't get. Um, at least then when you watch it afterwards, there's context to it. Um, often people say, oh, well, I don't have to come to the workshop. I'll just get the thing afterwards. Uh, but uh, if you weren't in the presentation, you won't necessarily have the context. And there's lots of images that come up that I then explain and describe without the accompanying text. And um, so it's also wise to maybe make some notes while we're going through it. Let us start with a little bit of the basics of, uh, of YouTube. Um, so are you still unsure? Do you still think, you know what? Okay, it's nice to watch, but I mean, is there a benefit in it? So worldwide, there are 2.514 billion people on YouTube on an ongoing basis, okay? In South Africa, we got 28 million people on social media in total. And of the 28 million people on social media, 25.3 million are on YouTube. Okay, this is what's verified. And this is a January 2022 number. It hasn't been updated. So I wouldn't be surprised if we've added a couple of hundred thousand, if not a million to that. If you take that as the total percentage of people who are on the internet in South Africa, that's 61.4%. I know some of you might think it should be 100%, but in any case, it gives you a fair understanding of the amount of people who have internet connectivity who are on YouTube. If you want to take it as a percentage of the country, it's almost 45, 46% of every single person that lives in South Africa is on YouTube. And uh, a common question is, is it more men? Is it more women? Who do we target? In fact, the stats show it's a very clear 50-50 which for a lot of other platforms is not the case, especially if you look at Instagram, it's definitely slanted more towards, uh, towards uh, females. Right, so we're gonna jump right into your YouTube presence. So there are a lot of people who say, yes, we have videos on YouTube. Every now and then we upload a video. Uh, when something amazing happens, when we've done maybe an interview, when we've gone to an event, it's uploaded. And if I look to search for that video, I find lots of other videos. And if I do eventually find it, then most of the time it is connected to your personal profile. You have a YouTube channel and you've uploaded it. And maybe when I see that video and I click some further, I'll see some videos of your holiday and I'll see some videos of your kids running around and I'll see some videos of event that you uh, participated in. And it's not really related to what you are trying to um, uh, communicate and what your message is all about. So I'm just taking the example. I'm a fan of Chosen. Um, uh, some of you may have seen it, heard of it. So yesterday I just went to YouTube and I just typed in Chosen. Okay. Why do I type it in there? As you may know, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world. So it's first Google, then YouTube. So people go to YouTube to search all the time. I just typed in Chosen up comes a number of uh, options. So let's assume for a moment, I've never seen chosen and uh, the chosen, sorry. And someone says to me, there's this TV series about Jesus and his life and it's amazing and you should see it. And all I remember is chosen. I go to YouTube, I type in chosen. Now I see a couple of options there. Time to put on the glasses. Something about BLXST chosen, then the chosen. And then Joe Rogan exposed the chosen. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Best for me to do is to drag down a little bit on the YouTube page. Okay. Click on the filters and say, no, I know these guys must have a channel. I only want to see channels. Now, channel is what we're talking about today. 
It is a platform where all your videos will be contained in one space. And rather than one video being uploaded by Jack this week and another one by Jill next week and another one by Nati and another one by uh, Sheila, all the videos are contained in one platform. Compare this to your Facebook page for your organization or your Twitter profile or your LinkedIn profile. Right, so that's what I did. I clicked on channel. Up comes all the channels. And now I see actually it is the chosen. And it says that it's a TV series about Jesus. Right. Immediately, I know what I want to do. On the right-hand side, I click the subscribe button. And now I'm in the channel for the chosen. With a nice cover pick, with a nice profile pick on the left, okay, and listing all the, uh, the features of their channel. And as you can see from the left to the right-hand side, videos, shorts, live, playlists, community, other channels and about. Everything in one place. And this is exactly what I want you to have for your organization. Sure, they've got hundreds of videos, okay, if not thousands, but it's fine. The features that you see here, the cover pick, the profile pick, all the options of listing videos, shorts, going live, playlists, are the features that are available to any organization who wants to set up a YouTube channel. And that is what we're going to cover in the next half an hour. Let us firstly discuss the benefits of such a channel. Why can't you just continue doing what you're doing? Post a video on YouTube every now and then. Post a video on Facebook. Maybe put a link from a video on Twitter. Here are some specific benefits. Right. Firstly, because it's the second biggest search engine. And because I told you 2.5 billion people around the world on YouTube. Potentially, you're exposed to all of them. Sure, they're not all going to find your channel, but you are exposed to all of them. Once your video is on there, everyone will see it. Right. Marketing on YouTube will get you help found better on Google. Okay. Everyone knows that YouTube belongs to Google and Google tries to look after their own. So if you spend time on Google, if you spend time on uh, 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 YouTube, if you work on the platforms that Google supports, if you have Google My Business, and if you have a Google, um, you're well optimized for search engines, and if you have a Google um, Ads, all of these things help your organization to be found on Google. Right? This is the great part of social media and also the shocking part. I keep on telling teenagers who post silly things on social media, it never dies. If you post quality content, it also never dies. If you're going to talk about an event coming up, that is fine. I have no problem with that. I like that. But most of the stuff that we post, especially as Christian organizations, talking about Jesus, spreading the gospel, motivating, encouraging people, is content that never dies. And if I now go to Google, I'll be, uh, YouTube, I promise you I'll be able to find something about A.W. Tozer, somewhere along the line, someone must have posted something about A.W. Tozer on YouTube, okay? That guy died before I think even computers existed, right? But his stuff is on there, so it never does. When you have quality content, your audience says, I like this. And what do they do? They click the share button. So sharing becomes then a feature of your videos. And it means your audience is actually promoting you rather than you keeping to say the old, keep having to say, how are we going to get more people? How are we going to get more people? What's important for me is to gain the right audience. If you are in an organization that wants to sell, or if you talk more in terms of general marketing principles, you'll probably refer to this as getting the right target market. And the right target market are those people who will search for your videos. They will search for your videos based on the description you've added to the videos and they will find it and that will be the right people, right? So if I want to type in how to build my own bride, I will be coming to a Facebook channel that someone has set up how to do your own brickwork. So the beauty of this is I have searched for it. It is not what we call interruptive advertising. No one came to me and threw a flyer in my post box and said, hey, this is how to build a bride. 
when I search for it, I'm in search mode. And that is why it's an excellent opportunity to connect to the people who are searching for the stuff that you want to show them. Ads are very powerful. I know you're probably thinking, hey, I'm just getting into this. Hold off with the ads. Keep in mind, there are millions of videos online. Same way there are millions of organizations on Google. You're going to have to spend some money on advertising somewhere to get noticed. Keep in mind, you might have to start planning on having a monthly online or specifically social media advertising budget that you can then split between your Facebook and your Instagram ads and maybe YouTube and other places you want to advertise or you want to elevate your presence. What I like about the YouTube channel is that you can link your website to it. Rather than linking your website, people say, oh yeah, but I put a video on YouTube. Our organization has a video. Yes, but when I play that, play that video and I click the button that says uh, play it on YouTube, I see yours and immediately after that, I see some silly trick about a guy who's blindfolded a woman and he's going to push her into a pool. Okay, I'm like, what the heck is that, right? So if you put a link to your face from your website or your social media to your YouTube channel, it will play the videos that you have compiled, created, or curated, and people will be able to see the stuff that you want them to see. Same for social media. As you know, it's very powerful to link your Facebook account to YouTube, but Facebook prefers it if you upload the video directly to it and you'll get better traffic. But once the video has been uploaded and someone plays it, at the end, they'll have the option to jump to your channel. And here's a beautiful thing, subscribers. On every YouTube channel, there's a button that says, click here to subscribe. That means those people will be seeing all your videos. Every time a new video is, is made live or uploaded, they'll get an alert, a new video. And you don't have to worry about people coming back all the time. That's why when you watch a lot of these instructional videos, while the guy is talking, he says, please press the subscribe button on the right hand side and click the like button below. And they keep on encouraging you to subscribe. Before we talk about uh, setting up your channel and then also if there's time left to show you how to actually upload a video, I can hear some of you saying, but what if I got to post? And who's going to make these videos? Uh, let's take the example of a radio station. You know, with a radio station, why should we have videos? If you understand the power of YouTube and if you understand that people spend hours and hours on it, like we've just heard in the introduction, then it's an opportunity that you will sorely miss if you don't have a presence there. So I first want you to understand how valuable it is to just be there. And that may inspire you to come up with concepts to create content, to have a presence there. If I'm thinking of a radio station, the very first thing I'm thinking about is the times when they do interviews with people, okay? That's a perfect opportunity for that to be captured on video. So you hear the interview and you listen to it while you're in the car. Uh, you catch the last bit uh, while you're on internet radio. I love listening to internet radio. In fact, I listen to internet radio from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed at night and I listen to various stations. Um, what if once I've heard an interview and I say, wow, that's great. After the interview, the announcer says, and by the end of the day, or if they're super quick, which people love online, in the next hour or by the end of my show, this video will be online on our YouTube channel. Go find it there. And I can go and see that interview again. I can actually see what that person looks like because I only heard them on the radio. And I have an opportunity to click share. And I'm sharing with my friends. You've got to see this video. We all know we're getting those videos via uh, WhatsApp all the time. You've got to watch this video. You've got to watch this video. So firstly, immediately I think radio stations, interviews. What about events? Hey, we've had an outing. Uh, we had an outside broadcast. Uh, we supported the charity. We were there at the soup kitchen. Um, one of our announcers actually attended an event and he made a short video clip. Um, 
Um, this is the interview of the, uh, the DJ that is on the show or the announcer or whatever you want to call them. Maybe a short video clip of every single one of them. This is what I like. This is what I stand for. This is what I do when, I, when I'm not on, uh, here at the radio show or at the radio station. So there are plenty of opportunities to create videos. And then, as you recall, and we'll talk about that a bit later, as you recall from the slide from The Chosen, you have playlists inside your channel. So not all the videos are just dumped on your channel. There will be a playlist, and that will be called Events We Attended. And the next channel will be called um, Radio Interviews uh, Playlist. And the next playlist will be called uh, Meet Our Team. And the next playlist will be called um, uh, Things Happening in Our Town, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that is number one. There's lots of options. And then the second thing of what type of videos, you don't really have to make all your own videos. If you find a video on someone else's channel that you like, I'll show you later. You just click and add it to your channel. So don't think it's all about you. This is just my stuff. I've created it. Look, we are the best. We make great videos. Because once I'm on your channel and I see, hey, you're the Eastern Cape channel. Hey, uh, Eastern Cape uh, uh, radio station. You're in Kabecha. Oh, that's fantastic. Show, show, show. Oh, look, there's an event happening. Great. Um, because you've added the What's Up in Kabecha channel. Okay, and I see that as well. As long as you think it's relevant to what you're offering, you can just click it. Or did you see the latest episode of The Chosen? Or did you know that, I don't know, uh, a, a gospel singer is coming to, to our town and click here and this is his channel and he's the one and we'll be sponsoring or we'll be supporting or we're a partner of that event. So it's not just videos that you created yourself. The who? Okay. So this is the question we get asked most often. We don't have a professional videographer in our organization. Can we get someone in to make professional videos? Sure, do that at a cost of, if you're very lucky and if it's a friend or a family member, maybe 5,000 rand a video. If you want to do professionally, 10, 15, 20,000 rand a video. If it's something that is very important, and if it's something that will highlight your organization or maybe generate income, like we are supporting or partnering with or hosting this concert, I want to encourage you to get a professional person in and make a professional video. But for the bulk of it, these are videos you can make with the best video camera in the world. That's called a cell phone. Okay, cell phones make excellent videos. You may want to do a little bit of training with your team. And there's something I will happily discuss with you or share with you afterwards on how to make good cell phone videos, not to have uh, the wrong lighting at the back, uh, preferably not someone standing with a, a bottle of tequila in their hand while they're talking about uh, this gospel concert they're about to host, um, uh, uh, a background that's maybe not noisy, but by and large, the videos that people make with their cell phones are more than adequate for your channel. So please stop using that as an excuse. If you're in a fortunate position to have access to videos made for your organization or you've partnered with other organizations and you have access, use that. But don't dismiss the video made by one of your team members walking down the road and saying, I've met someone or there are two people, we're interviewing someone. That stuff works and people appreciate that authentic videos and the authentic content they see. Right, let's move on to creating your channel. Most of the time you will need a, you probably will need a Google uh, email address, a Gmail address to start your channel. So if your organization does not have a Gmail address, try the easy option of just using your name like kingfisher at gmail.com. If it's taken, go Kingfisher FM. If it's taken, go Kingfisher Radio. Try many options. I'm not a fan of underscores or 01 or 72 or um, any, anything like that. So try and get a name. But remember, that is not an email address that you're going to use out there. This is the email address that's primarily going to give you access to your YouTube channel. And that'll also 
give you access to your company's YouTube, uh, your company's Google account. And just yesterday, I was setting up Google My Business for a company in Johannesburg. So with that same Gmail address, you'll set up Google My Business, which is a very, very important aspect for your search engine optimization for your website. But like they say, that's for another session. Right, so very first thing, I'm gonna go to youtube.com and I'm gonna click, I wanna create a channel. It's gonna say zap in your Gmail address. And then once you've done that, you're gonna to come to a page that says, yes, here's your channel. Now start giving it a name, start giving it information. And I wanna start at this page that says branding. When you come to the branding page, there's going to be two options. The one is to upload uh, the logo of your organization, and the other one is to upload the banner. Right. So keep in mind that people consume YouTube on their phone, tablet, laptop, huge desktop, and more and more TV. I was just earlier on, I was just chatting to Jonathan. I bumped into him in uh, Musenberg uh, uh, last month. I went with my family. We stayed in a hotel in, uh, in Fishhook. TV, remote, it's good. Netflix and YouTube. No more TV channels, no more DSTV, Netflix and YouTube. And that is it. So keep in mind, a lot of people watch YouTube via the big flat screen TVs. So it is important to adhere to the guidelines of the dimensions of the sizes of the, your picture, which we call your profile picture and your banner image. And keep in mind, it will look different on those platforms. But if you adhere to the sizes of these logos, uh, this artwork, it will give you the best possible appearance on those. So what I did here, as I clicked upload uh, at the logo, where you see the M, and um, there's my logo uploaded. As you can see, my logo doesn't fit very nicely because I didn't really size it properly. So I have to resize that logo. I don't know what you use or how you design. And if you've got professional designers in your organization, you are very blessed. Uh, or if you outsource to professional designers, that is the ultimate. Uh, if you are trained on Adobe uh, or any of those, that's fantastic. For me, as a mere uh, um, a, a beginner in, in design and a mere novice in that, I use Canva. I'm a big fan of Canva uh, at canva.com, canva.com. And in fact, when I go to Canva, I don't even have to worry about the dimensions. I click in, they say, what do you want to design today? And I say, I want to design a YouTube profile picture. And it automatically has the right dimensions. Whatever image or logo I have, I upload, and then I zap it into the Canva program, and I can play around with the size and the colors and give it a frame and maybe add extra text, whatever. The same applies for the banner image. So what I did yesterday, this is a, a, a YouTube channel I created yesterday for a mining exploration company. I took one of their pictures that's on their website and I said, we love this picture and I uploaded it and that's what it looked like. So I wasn't really thrilled with that because I thought, wow, okay, so what am I seeing there? So if you look carefully, you'll see the biggest square shows you what will be available, viewable on video, on TV. Then a little bit smaller in the very middle from left to right is what you will see on desktop. And then that little bit in the middle is viewable on all devices, which means that's most likely what you will see on mobile. So when I uploaded the whole thing, if you look at the bottom image in my, um, on my screen there, I have uploaded it. And you can see how it appears there in a way on TV, a laptop and mobile. So yes, you will have a challenge with this and you may have to customize this design to fit in that. And you may have to tweak your logo a little bit or say, listen, let me stick with the logo in the picture and just use a, 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 a in, in the profile, and let me just use an image that represents my organization. 
And as a mining exploration company, this represents them the best. Right, as you could see uh, from the previous slide, there are three options to look at a channel customization, the layout, the branding, and the basic info. I start with the branding because I first want the logos up. When you look at the layout, it gives you various options of what is the first video you want people to see when they arrive? What do you want people to see that are returning, et cetera, et cetera? Do you want feature? So there's quite a lot of options there. The reason why I don't, I don't like starting there is because when I start my channel, I actually don't really have any videos yet. So how can I have a trailer for people who haven't subscribed and a returning one and features and et cetera, et cetera. So it's important that you come back to that very last, uh, the very first option uh, called layout. Once you have those videos that you want to upload. So I start with the branding and then I like to jump to basic info and basic info is not so basic. This is actually should be called essential info, right? So when I click on essential or basic info, I've got my name and then it asks me for my handle. My handle is probably um, what it's going to be like once the channel has a bit of traffic, the same uh, with um, LinkedIn and Facebook, then they will give you, you your own specific URL. So this company is called Metal X and, and I want the um, URL to be uh, youtube.com forward slash Metal X. So I want that to be my handle. Then when I type in Metal X, it says taken. The website address is metalx.pro. For those of you who don't know, that's a new extension you can get on websites. So I then chose Metal X Pro, and that was available. So that is the handle that I'll be using. So in future, it'll be easy for people to remember. The description is very, very important because the description will help people find your organization. So it is quite possible. No, in fact, it's very possible to create a YouTube channel without filling in that basics. Remember, search engines can only search text. They can't search images. Okay, you may take an image on your phone and, and um, a YouTube will help you identify it because of images stored in their database. But when you go to a uh, phone or a computer and you search for something, you will not be able to search uh, for a picture or something. So you need to type in words. And if you type in text for something that you're looking for, uh, there's not the accompanying text found. Okay, it's very rare these days, but imagine that you are searching for fluffy pink slippers and there's not a single website in the world that sells fluffy pink slippers. Then you would actually get a result in Google that says, Sorry, no results found. That is because it's not there. Even though I may go to a website and I see a beautiful picture of fluffy pink slippers. So keep in mind that you are going to promote your channel via your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your um, website, but you also want people to discover it the same way I've typed in the chosen. So people are going to type in Christian radio station in the Eastern Cape. Um, TV programs for youth, um, uh, whatever people may type in, gospel shows near me, um, online radio station, gospel, I think about all the phrases that people might want to search. And unless that's in your description, people will not be able to find you. Right. You also have an option at the bottom to add another language. Um, I would not recommend you add another language unless your organization um, speaks another language on an ongoing basis uh, in either business or on your shows. And there are people who are proficient in that language because once you provide that option, you need to be able to communicate to people in that. Okay. 
So you'll be getting a channel URL, okay? And that is a specific ID. So that's different than your handle. So you can't cha change that, but that's your URL and you can copy that and immediately start putting that in your uh, links to your website, uh, from your website and your social media. Then you have the option to add extra links right on top of your banner. And here I typed in the name of a link and I said, that is my website. And this is where you'll be able to put in your social media links as well. And then at the very bottom, you'll see here it says contact info. And that is where you put your email address. Something in advanced settings, I think if you arrive there now, it will automatically be uh, a set like this. But for me, that's just quite important. You know, when you watch a video and there's comments, yeah, you have an opportunity to just accept all comments. You know what? I'm going to put the message out there. If people have something to say, let them bring it on. I'll deal with it. Or I only want to make comments live once I've had to review them, or I want to disable all comments, or in this case, that I clicked here, I want to allow Google's clever algorithms to hold potentially inappropriate comments. So if they see any racism, uh, slander, uh, misogyny, um, profanity, any of those things, hopefully the AI, everything we're hearing about today, artificial intelligence, will spot that and hold that comment. And you'll be able to come into the back end and approve or disapprove. So those are your various options. And then at the very bottom, it also says, show how many viewers like this video. Um, so that means other people can see how many people have liked it already. So you may not have known this when you watch the video from the front end, but all these options are there. So sometimes you see a video has not been liked or you see no comments and you wonder why, then you know it's because the channel owner has decided to not allow that or allow certain things in the back end. That is as basic as it is to set up a channel. It can be done in an hour, providing you have all your content ready. And by content, I mean the cover pic, the profile uh, picture, which is the photo in this case, the descriptions you want to add in the back end, your address details, phone numbers, whatever you want to add. If you have all that stuff, so please don't just start and as you go along say, oh, shucks, I don't have a logo. Oh, shucks, we haven't discussed what we're going to put as a profile picture. So try and have those things ready prior to starting. Make sure you have the Gmail address. And then when you get going, you'll probably get it done in an hour or less. So I am going to maybe, uh, Jonathan, just allow uh, opportunity for a few questions on setting up your channel. Um, because once we've uh, 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 heard what people have to ask, we can either address it now, I can tell you whether the answer is coming later. And then we're going to talk about a little bit more about posting your video. Uh, because there are maybe some aspects to posting a video that I think people have neglected. You previously just uploaded the video. But the point of having a channel after all is to have videos there. And I can't just show you how to set up a channel if I don't show you how to upload a video. Does that make sense, Jonathan? Makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Yapi. Thank you so much. Uh, so ladies, gents, um, Yapi has put it out to us. Any questions specifically to setting up that channel? Um, I think, you know, all of us have had that experience where you get frustrated because you're looking for something and you're not finding what you're looking for, whether it be on YouTube or on any other search engine with regard to that. So yeah, any questions, Stefan? Yeah, um, okay, this might be a silly question. I was just wondering, is there any copyright law when it comes to what content I can use and post? Meaning that, as far as I understand, if it's on the internet 
and it's available, then I can share it and link it to my page without having any copyright restrictions. Okay, so right, so that is part of posting what we need to come to. Um, okay. Yes, I think uh, uh, there is there is definitely copyright issues. Uh, firstly, when someone makes a video available on social media, then you can share it. Okay, there's no restriction. Okay, because that's after all what I want. I want you mm. to share my video. I want to post the video. And I'm hoping you're going to share it with your thousand buddies. So sharing yes. is no problem. Okay. The copyright issue would come if you take content from other platforms and you compile your own thing, uh, pretending that it's your content. That's what okay. I would be concerned about. No, that about. makes sense. Okay. And the third thing is music. Okay, we've done several of that. We thought, ah, oh, man, they're not going to know what we're doing down here in, 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 the, in the bottom end of dark Africa. And I'm going to post a video and I add a nice U2 song to it. And the very next day we arrive there and there's no music. We're like, but click, did we not add the music? Okay, and they got these algorithms that are checking every single song that's ever been published. And I said, sorry, no. In fact, um, uh, the biggest Christian radio station in uh, Namibia, Canal Siva, they contacted me. I did a lot of work for them. Uh, I worked in Namibia for a few years. They hosted a concert sponsored by them in Vintu. They recorded the guy. They uploaded to YouTube and YouTube blocked it. And they said, no, but, but it was our concert. And YouTube said, no, online, you don't have that right, guy's permission. And you cannot do it. And then you have to jump through a lot of hoops to do it. So we'll talk a bit more about the music. But I think the music is one of the biggest issues. That's why often when you listen to a YouTube video, it's all this little boring elevator music mm -hmm. in the background. Yeah. Because you can actually buy clips like that. Okay, so just last question. Now that you are talking about music, I've noticed on a lot of Facebook videos and so forth, you know, when they have, uh, for example, there's this guy, um, he's got a bulldog, Pablo, and they do very funny videos. When they use an artist, a commercial artist music, they give them credit at the bottom of the screen. They say the title and the song and where they got it from. Is that one way to overcome the copyright? Okay, so uh, I will show you what YouTube okay. has done. They have made, they've made music available now for you to use for free. Okay. Okay. So okay. No problem. I'm uh, ahead of myself. No, no, no. That's fine. But I'm quite certain it's 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 um, uh, it's YouTube inserting that information uh, into your video once you use that, unless they have asked specific. But just mentioning the guy's name, no, that's not going to get you past it. Okay. So it's either supplied by YouTube or this guy has a direct direct relationship with their agency okay. or their agent to allow it. Okay, thank you. Okay. And Yapi, um, tell me if yeah, well. example, we are recording an interview and in the middle of the interview, we go into a music break. How will that work for the copyright? Isn't that okay, almost so the same what, as... Yes. So what you need to do is you need to record the video and then you need to, you need to stop it or pause it or unfortunately you have to stop it. Okay, and start it again afterwards. Okay, and there are many free uh, uh, programs on, on, on your phone and YouTube has its own editing tool and you're just going to add those two together. Okay, so, but I was imagining, let's just say we're doing a live interview. We're going live on YouTube. Oh, oh okay, so that's live. Yeah, so uh, that is a good question. I don't really know the answer to that. Uh, there are um, uh, the option of going live is here, and I'll show you how to do yeah. that later. But uh, that's a very good question because I don't know how they can block you then. Jonathan's putting I've up his it. finger. I've got my yes. finger up. Sorry, I, I wanted to jump in there because we, uh, so Tanya and anybody else, uh, we use a platform called StreamYard, and it works so well. StreamYard, uh, you get a free version, which obviously gives you a very limited uh, capability, but if you pay, uh, you can buy a subscription up for a year. It really works out quite affordable. Um, and then you can link using StreamYard. You can do interviews live in person in your studio or via 
internet connectivity and um, you can then pause, you can do various things and, and it automatically goes live to your Facebook, to your YouTube. There are a couple of other platforms, uh, I can't remember them off the top of my, my head, um, that it also can go live to. But yeah, we typically focus on live to Facebook and YouTube. It creates an announcement post. Uh, it's an amazing piece of software. So Tanya, check out StreamYard. Okay. Simply okay. streamyard.com. Okay. Thank uh, you. It really, it okay. works so well. That that will be able to help you with regard to that. Great. Thank you, Jonathan. Right. Shall we uh, progress to posting your video? Yes, uh, please. Spend a lot of time on that. So when you get to your uh, uh, YouTube channel now, um, you will see, uh, if you click on your channel uh, details, you'll see something that says YouTube Studio. And YouTube Studio is where you need to go to upload your video. Um, I clicked, I want to upload a video. And I took the video that was on my desktop. And this is a video that we made to promote the session. And as I click that, uh, immediately it asked me, is it made for kids or not? So YouTube is quite big on this lately. So I was a bit confused with that in the beginning. Say so like, well, yeah, kids can watch it, but it's not made for kids. So please be very careful not to um, always be 100% honest when you're on these platforms because being blocked is not nice. And it's not like you can just call YouTube and say, unblock me. So is it made for kids? No. But is there age restriction? No. So that's what I chose there. Then while I click that, you can see on the right-hand side, uh, sorry, let me just jump a step back. Um, while I click, you can see on the right-hand side, it says uploading video. So I don't have to wait for the entire video to be uploaded until I add all the details uh, uh, about the video. So it's being uploaded. Then if on the left-hand side, if you see at the very bottom left of the screen, there's a, 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 a drop-down that says presentations. So that's playlists. So on my channel, I already have playlists. So it immediately asks me, listen, to which playlist do I want to add that? Okay. So there I've clicked. I, these are the four playlists I have. And I chose one of those. And then I add the title and a description. Now, the description is of great importance. Previously, it used to be called tagging. At the bottom, there is a section called tags. Uh, but yes, yesterday, I reminded myself when reading that, that it says, if you've added a description, it is sufficient. Tags won't make a big difference unless it's something in your channel that people often misspell. So the primary place for you to tell people what you want to tell them is in the description. And as much detail as you can about the video will help, firstly, people find it and will help the right audience, okay? I don't want to say a thousand people watch my video and then when I find out it's all because they typed in the wrong thing. So I can be a little bit, shall we say, devious and to find a topic that is very relevant at the moment. Um, what's that revival called? Is it Avery, Avery revival? Type that in as one of the, the descriptions and people will rock up on my page because people are desperate to find out more about that. And, um, and once they arrive there, they say, oh no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, and then they will leave. So I'd rather have the audience that I intend working with. Now you can see the video is slowly being uploaded. And um, uh, in fact, it says it's fully uploaded. I have an option here on the very left. If you look at the very left of the three images, you'll see you say upload thumbnail. Now the upload thumbnail is a little image that will be like the opening credits of my video. If I choose not to upload the thumbnail, it will just, my video will just start playing with the first screen. So that gives you an option to say, this is what this video is about. So once again, make sure you know the right dimensions of the, the thumbnail and what you want to say on it. Okay, so if I see the video, if I scroll, okay, 
if you scroll now through uh, uh, YouTube and you saw that image of me there with my mouth open <laughs> sitting under a, a acorn tree, you would have no idea what this is about and you, unless you read the description and you most likely scroll past it. But if there was a little image that says online social media training, then you're like, wow, okay, maybe that's something I want to hear more about and you will click play. Here's an option. It might take you a little bit of more uh, uh, experimenting, but remember YouTube has been set up like this to make it easier for everyone to post. And remember, the more you're gonna post, the more people are gonna watch videos and the more money as YouTube is gonna make. So it's not a charity job for them. They actually want to generate more money. So they're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to operate this. But some of these things you have to experiment with a little bit. So add an end screen. And that is where you can actually add another clip or you can add um, some information, which will probably be either written text or will be a little piece of uh, 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 artwork that you created, that you upload and says, okay, if you like this, watch more or the show will air again on this. Or now that you've seen the interview with this artist, his concert will be on this and this day. And that gives you an opportunity to add that. Adding cards, that is like adding something in between the video. So while people are watching, you say, hey, by the way, subscribe to our website. Hey, by the way, the concert is coming up. Hey, by the way, did you know we'll be meeting there? And you can now support this course, uh, donate this, whatever. So there's options for you to do that. So I would say experiment with this. Easy thing to do is set up your own YouTube channel in your own name. Take a video, upload there. I don't care if it's your video of your last holiday to Umschlanger and take that video, upload it and maybe experiment with it and say, hey, the kids eating ice cream or hey, me doing the bungee jump uh, at Blowcrans or hey, and then experiment with that. Click it, upload it because only once you see it live can you appreciate what your video is all about. And then you can say, wow, I shouldn't have done that. That's too long. That's too short. Because here you will see at the end, there are quite a few things that you can do showing you in terms of where along the line you want to post those things. And you can actually drag that little bar at the top and it will show you where you can post the video. So here at the left-hand side, you'll see it's 1 minute 12, 21 seconds and uh, 11 hundredths of a second and you can decide where you want to post it and in this case I clicked um, sorry I clicked um, add an end screen and then it gives me multiple options okay what do I want to add so the two abreast there says do I want to add two videos do I want to add one video one playlist and one subscribe button I chose to add two videos and then I added two other videos that are already in my channel. And that's what it looked like. So when you get to the very end screen, okay, there it says from 121 to 141. That is when um, those ad screens will appear. And then uh, people will be able to see that while they play at the end, they will say, oh, watch this video, watch this video. Um, if you look at the very bottom of the screen, it says I've added that video, I can add a subscribe, I can add playlist presentations. These are all the options that you have to add your video and make your video more meaningful to the people who are, uh, are consuming it. And also getting people to watch another video and another video, because the more people stay on your page, uh, the more they um, can um, see what, what it's all about and the more they can start engaging with your organization. I guess you're all seeing my battery message there in the top. Right. Now I can click save or publish. So I wanted you to see uh, that the, the little image I uh, uh, selected there as my thumbnail was not the correct size. 
um, and it doesn't do my video justice. So please make sure that you test this and see what it looks like at the end. Now here are options for publishing it, making it private, unlisted, public. I, I don't know why you would make it private or unlisted, uh, unless, of course, you are going to use, set up a video just for your team. Imagine this. So people forget the power of YouTube is not just for the audience, uh, for everyone out there, okay? So if I choose unlisted, then I can make a video for my team. And say, hi team, it's fantastic. Sorry, man, I'm out of the country today, out of town. I want to motivate you. This is what we're planning for this week, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can just send them all a link. You don't have to email everyone a video. So you can make a video from your phone and you don't have to worry that anyone else will see it because only people with that link can watch that video. And you can go as far as to go and remove the video, delete it the moment that people have seen it. So there are options there to do that. So don't think just everyone must see every video. You can schedule the video. So how about thinking the way you think about scheduling on Facebook? You want to upload this video only on the 1st of March, but you're not going to be available on 1st of March. Or oh, you've looked, it's going to be load shedding. Um, so why don't just upload the video today, but don't publish it, schedule it and say, I want people to see this video at 11.30 on 22. So I can make a video now. Uh, yesterday, I could have made a video that said, um, thank you very much for attending our workshop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll go live at 11.30, okay, um, after or 10, uh, hour after our workshop, uh, our training session. Um, firstly, I don't have that pressure to upload it right at that time. And secondly, uh, it will make me appear very professional because, wow, look, that guy's hardly finished the session and um, already his video is live. Then if you look at the bottom here, you see something set as premiere. You may have seen that before when you um, watch a video and it says this is a premiere. If I tick that button, I can actually schedule my video for a specific time and at the same time, create it like it's a, like a movie type thing and everyone is going to watch it together. So read what it says there. You and your viewers can watch it together. And when the video starts, you can interact with them in live comments. Right, so think about this. I post Oh dear, um, I thought it was maybe just me. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we lost. No, it's everybody. Okay. <laughs> it was right in the middle of making a great point. I was listening carefully, and then bam. I'm sure he'll come back. I'm sure he'll come back. I'm sure he will come back. Let me give you a call. Okay, cool. Thanks, Natalie. Uh, I see there's a screen, uh, somebody that's called Carmen. Carmen, would you mind putting your video on quickly and just saying hello, good morning, hi, hi. Uh, you need to unmute for us. Oh, please. I was muted, sorry, hello. <laughs> so, uh, Carmen, which organization do you represent? Where are you? And for us a Freedom of Religion yeah. South Africa. Oh, I was the one that sent you that text yesterday. Yes, you are. <laughs> Fantastic, Carmen. Yeah. Sorry, I, I've never seen your face. So I, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Cool. And I'm Carmen, where do you where do you find yourself uh, today? Where are you in Stellenbosch? Or no, I'm at the office actually in Edgemead. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, and then the rest of the team, Michael and Daniela, is in Stellenbosch. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Thanks, Carmen. <laughs> So are you finding the training good so far? Yes. Um, like, as you know, like I actually enjoyed the WhatsApp group. I actually learned quite a bit on the WhatsApp group training from last week. Um, the YouTube training, um, there's actually a lot of the things that, you know, Yaku was talking about that we, that I actually do on a daily basis, basically. So, but it's always, yeah, it's cool. It's informative. Brilliant. No, that's good. Tanya, did you want to say something or ask something? I'm fine. Thank you. I'm just having coffee right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quick coffee, coffee break. And a little biscuit. <laughs> oh, okay. And Natalie, what does Yarpi say? Has he got load shedding or something? Yes, he says um, load shedding just started for him, but oh. it's in the waiting room, so he's coming back in. Great, fantastic. Awesome. Oh, this load shedding is uh, challenging at the best of times. There we go, Yapi. <laughs> Welcome back, bud. Uh, Welcome back, Yapi. Welcome back. I'm not going to give you 10 guesses what happened. <laughs> Any case. Is it your wife? Right. She's fed up with you talking and pulled out your power cable. Uh, no, in fact, I uh, was on a on an inverter, and um, mm. so I was lucky to to have that. But um, in the case, so shall we continue? Right. So, right, the last few slides. So we were talking about the premier. Am I right? Um, I just want to finish the premier. I think it's a great opportunity to use uh, for something. And um, we, during the lockdown, uh, our Sunday church services were like that. Um, and uh, it was recorded uh, and then it went live at a certain time. And you actually get, even get, uh, you may have seen it before, you get a countdown um, and uh, a counter uh, uh, that says starting in three minutes and, and it counts down from and then 259, 256, whatever. And you also get um, uh, different uh, uh, themes. And you can say, I want a dramatic theme or a movie theme. And it actually looks like a movie start. Right. So that is it. The last thing is the moment you've uploaded your video, immediately there's an option to share. So I immediately click on the share button. And when I click um, on WhatsApp, it opens up my WhatsApp. If I have a WhatsApp group, I can immediately share it, Facebook, Twitter. What's the point of uploading it and not sharing it straight away? So I would encourage you, once you've uploaded that video, share it immediately. Right, I got some extras. Okay, we're a few minutes uh, past our time. Can I finish the extras, Jonathan? Yeah, quickly, I think that'll be great okay. if you could finish the okay. extras. That'll be fantastic, so, thanks. So live, live streaming, um, you can't live stream straight away. And this is something you also have to work on. Like Jonathan said, uh, there's another app that they use, but all of this is actually available for free via YouTube. So you can do a live stream, but you can't stream at that moment. You have to request it. So when I click this, that said, uh, when I did this yesterday at five o'clock, it says you can uh, live stream at five o'clock today. So it does take some time. Yeah, as it's Stefan, we spoke about music. If you go on the left-hand side of your channel, you'll see a few options. The very first one is subtitles. I played around with that yesterday as well. So you can actually add subtitles to your video. The nice thing is, and this is where the artificial intelligence is absolutely amazing. When I uploaded my video and I click subtitles, every single thing I said in the video is coming up already in text, oh, yes. right? It's already there, but it's no, they, they, they miss some commas and full stops and some words. Uh, so I can just go there and edit it and I just click it. And then I can go uh, screen by screen 
and I can add that subtitles to that screen. So while I'm talking, it's coming up in that screen. So if you're going to interview someone in a vernacular language, but you want the English uh, speaking audience to see it, there's an option there. But remember, then you've got to record it separately because that person's language will be coming up in the subtitles. But if you have a person uh, with a heavy accent or speaking very fast, or if they're Scottish or Irish and you think they speak English, but uh, it doesn't sound like it, then the subtitles will be a great idea. <laughs> Let's just continue going down the left. Copyright. Okay, you can find out everything about copyright there, Stefan. Earn. Um, I had that slide in there to show you when you can earn money from your YouTube channel, but I thought it might be a bit demotivating because you need like 1,000 hours worth of watching. People needed to watch 1,000 hours um, or you have to have X amount of followers. But it's a great opportunity if you want to look into how to earn and customization is where you um, set up what video people must see when they land, what people return, return visitors must see, et cetera, et cetera. But here coming to the audio library, look at that. All that music is available there. So you may not necessarily find something that is 100% to your liking, but um, these are, are artists that I think uh, YouTube has already made an agreement with. And you can just uh, play it, uh, see what type of the license is. You can download it and then you can add that to your videos when it's a video where you don't necessarily have someone speaking. Uh, same goes for sound effects when it's a, I don't know, a boing boing or water dripping or something. But these are some, uh, some great tools that are available there. And listen, people, you're not going to get this right unless you dive in there and you experiment with it. Yesterday, I went online and I bought a, um, an animation video program called Doodly. And um, I'm excited now to start working with that and see how I can start make my own animation videos that I will then talk about a certain social media concept and you don't have to see slides on my face and I'm gonna upload that. But I really have to go and spend time and experiment with it, how to produce the Doodly videos and then in turn, how to maximize that on, uh, on, on, uh, on YouTube. I'm really trying to wrap my mind around the whole AI thing and especially the chat GPT. But I read an article yesterday where someone created the, 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 the copy for the video in chat GPT and he went viral straight away. So if you don't know what chat GPT is, go look it up. It's an unbelievable uh, artificial intelligence tool that's available for free. And um, yesterday I read another article a blog posting that will take someone two or three hours to write to chat GPT, chat GPT three minutes. So yeah, I don't know how that's going to change our lives, but if it can help you and help you get the message out there, I, I want to encourage you to start looking at it. Another thing that um, uh, we may uh, probably not do too often is go back at some of your videos and see, listen, man, that video is still there. Okay, it's been viewed a, a few times. If I look at that video, uh, 14 July, viewed 78 times. How can I actually make that video more powerful and use it again? So I just clicked on the content thing on the left-hand side. I picked that video and there I was back in it and I could actually edit it. And I could rename the title and I could rename the, uh, the, the description and I could actually trim the video and add something, right? So that was a social media workshop that I, that I presented in. Um, in, in Vintook, and I can actually just go there, take out that front slide, put in a new slide there with a date for a uh, similar thing I'm going to do in Cape Town, play through the whole video, listen whether there's places where I mention specific Vintook, cut that out, and then in the end, put an end, uh, 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 like we said, an end banner um, just to promote my workshop in Cape Town. So just because you've made the video there on the info cards and the end screen, just because you've made the video once and it's there, it's not to say you can't edit it and repurpose it. I like seeing my analytics. That's also part of the, the, the options on the left-hand side. And I can see uh, how many people I've reached, how many have engaged, who my audience is, click-throughs and everything. And this will help me understand um, to what extent uh, people are watching my videos. Uh, or is it just me, you know, that whole story of a billboard in the desert? And then lastly, when I create my channel, 
it's empty. I created that channel for that mining company yesterday. And I said, please send me videos. And they said, no, we want the channel uh, because we're doing a new website and we want to link to our channel, but we don't have any videos, not a single video. So I thought, okay, no man is an island. No business is an island. No organization is an island. You are in an industry and there's other stuff to share. So I thought, what type of video will add value to people coming to that channel? It will not be detrimental to the brand of this mining company and will not be a competitor. So I just typed in mining exploration process. I found a quite a few videos. I watched one. I will always watch a video before I post it because I don't know if halfway through the video, the guy strips his clothes and does something funny or starts swearing or shouting at the government or blaming ESCOM for our woes. So I will watch the whole video. And if I like it, I will right click on the video if you see, it's very difficult to see now, but on the top of each video, there are three little dots. And if I right click on that, it gives me all these options. And I just click save to playlist. And now it's immediately in that channel. So when you arrive with this brand new channel tomorrow that I created yesterday, at least there's already a video on there. It talks to what our industry does and it's, it's relevant. So please go and find those videos. If your organization constantly, if you're a radio station and you've done many interviews with um, Angus Bachen, go and add some videos to your channel. If you love playing, you know, Loisa's music, okay, go to his channel, add some of it and do a playlist because you'd rather people come to your channel and see all those things than going to 10 different channels. Then your channel becomes sort of a portal, okay, and you create curate the content and people know listen i can go to that channel and they always have interesting content for me right people that's as much as we can fit in now um jonathan um i see feel free to ask questions oh that was a nice question thank you yeah um it's now up to you to decide if people want to ask more questions uh, live, raise their finger, their hand, or wave, or how do you do that? <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is an invitation, ladies, gents. Uh, if you've got a question that you'd like to ask, Yapi has made himself available. Um, yeah, so this is it. Um, firstly, let me just say thank you, Yapi, and uh, thank you very much for that training. I see Carmen needs to go. Uh, thank you so much, Carmen, for being a part of today's training. And we wish you and the rest of the Forest State team all the best. Stefan, I see your hand. Oh, no, I just want to say thank you very much, Yopi. I think it was a good session. And I'm actually going to go now and create my um, YouTube page. Excellent. Why don't you share the link with us once you've done it? Um, because that's uh, extra motivator for you to do it because we'd like to see it as well. Okay, Ooh. I'll do that. Do that. Send it to Natalie, and then Natalie can disseminate yes. it to everybody who was here. Tanya, I see your hand. Yes, yes, yes. I also want to say thank you very much. It's been very motivational. Uh, and Yapi, I'll go find you on social media. I'll start following you. And yeah, I appreciate this, guys. Thank you. I'm also going to be leaving now. Uh, appreciate the opportunity. Oh, no, thank you, Tanya. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, I think from my side, from my side, Yopi, the one question that I had, um, you spoke about the, the premiere option or when you upload a video, then you can immediately share it. And I noticed things like Reddit and there was one other one uh, that I've never heard of, something like GeoTalk or something like that. Um, these other platforms, is it worthwhile for us as Christian media organizations to try and venture into those? So, I mean, that's, a, that's an excellent question because there's never just one. There's never just one. Um, I believe because of the power of YouTube and because it's so huge that I would primarily uh, focus on that. Um, the, the only other channel that I would ever be interested in doing, and especially if I want to share stuff maybe more in-house, uh, is Vimeo. So Vimeo is also very popular. Um, and they probably all have the same uh, type of uh, methodology in terms of uploading and sharing and, and categories and tagging, etc. cetera. Um, but once your video is on YouTube, um, 
you can share it from there to any other platform. You don't have to reload it. When you go to another platform, you have to up, obviously upload the video to their channel. Um, and I think that's just going to replicate your work. Um, but there are definitely much more niche options for people in certain industries, maybe something like, I don't know, the mining industry. But I challenge you, go to YouTube and search for something that you think is <laughs> it's very, very unlikely that it will be there. And um, you'll be surprised because you'll find it there. And I know my uh, teenage daughter, um, she doesn't use Google at all. She just searches in YouTube. In fact, she searches in Instagram because if it's an Instagram, obviously it's, it's just, it's close to the gospel, right? That's true. <laughs> it's it's got to be. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I would encourage you to, uh, to um, uh, uh, um, see what people are, are, are searching for. Um, and then you can also, what I like, you can also go to Google Trends. And you can see what phrases people are searching for, what people are looking for. And maybe if the world is desperate for something, we got to create content around the stuff that people are searching for rather than just pushing our stuff and say, click here to find it. No, that's great. That's fantastic. Sure. Well, I think uh, we've covered all the aspects. It's been great. Uh, thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, I know some of the other people had to sadly duck uh, a little bit sooner, but uh, it's really been good. The great thing is Natalie is going to make the recording available to each of us who attended this. And uh, so you can go and sit and watch again if you've got questions. But I liked what you said and how you challenged Stefan and others by saying, guys, go and do it. Go and play around. Go and spend some time and uh, figure it out for yourselves. So that's that's very good advice. Um, yeah. And then uh, Stefan and others, I hope you're gonna join us in next week's training. Uh, there are two more sessions and you will be doing a great job with regard to that. Tell your friends, tell your family about this. It's a great opportunity. Yapi, thank you so much for your time. Natalie, thank you for coordinating and making it all happen for us. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. See you guys next week. Thank you. Great day, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.